I received a message from a student who asked me to solve these questions, so I'm going to add this question into our um, static electricity in AP Physics 1. Um, it's actually AP Physics 2, but AP Physics 1 has partially this material. So we will look at, so this is AP Physics 2. A proton, neutron, and electron are in a uniform electric field, and the electric field is given 20 newtons per coulomb. That is caused by two charged um, plates that are 30 centimeters apart. So the 30 centimeters apart between two plates. The particles are far enough apart so they don't interact with each other. They are released from rest a quite distant from the plate. And what is the magnitude of the net force acting on the particle? So electric field formula says that you have E is equal to the force acting on the electric field force acting on the charge over the charge. And this is the test charge, if you remember. And you could rewrite this uh, formula as KQ, and this is the source charge over the distance squared. And that is the distance away from the source. So that would be the strength of electric field away from the source. So if I want to calculate the force acting on the electron and proton, or on the, yes, electron and proton, because they have the same charge, I have the force electron and proton is equal to, so and proton is equal to Q, the charge of either proton or electron and times the electric field. So the charge of the electron and proton is 1.67 10 to the negative 19 and the electric field that they give you is 20 so my answer is 3.2 10 to the negative 18 newtons so that is the strength of electric field so that's for part a and there is no force acting on the neutron because the neutron has no charge so if I uh, multiply by Q both sides and try to solve for electric force, I'm going to get the zero because neutron has no charge. Then for the second part, they ask what is the magnitude of the acceleration of each particle? So if this is your force, force is equal to ma. So you, if you look at the electron, you can find an electron force or acceleration because you will have the mass of the electron. And if you look at the force acting on the proton, you have the mass of the proton and acceleration of the proton. And the mass of the proton um, is going to be given to you in the uh, formula sheets when you have your AP exam. So the mass of the electron is 9.1110 to the negative first. Uh, negative 31st. So I have the force, which is 3.2, 10 to the negative 18, equals to the mass of the electron is 911, 10 to the negative 31st, and then I have acceleration of the electron. So I get acceleration of the electron is equal to 3.5, 10 to the 12 meters per second and its acceleration it doesn't mean the speed is 10 to the 12 because speed of light is 10 to uh, 310 to the 8 uh, but doesn't mean that the proton or electron will be moving for so long it doesn't mean it will be looking for one second to reach this velocity um, and then for the second one i have the same uh, force 3.2 10 to the negative 18 is equal to the mass of the electron of the proton is equal to 1.6 10 to the negative 27 and then i have acceleration of the proton so from here i have acceleration of the proton is equal to 1.9 10 to the 9 meters per second squared next one they ask you how much work is done on each particle and because they are um so the plates are 30 centimeters apart but the particles are far enough from each other and they are let me see i think they said 
equidistant from both sides. So the distance each particle will move is only 15 centimeters. So the distance is 15 centimeters here. Um, so this was our A, this was our B, and for C part, um, the work is equal to force times the distance. So because the force is on both particles is the same, so the work for electron and the proton is going to be the same, and the work for the neutron is going to be zero because there is no force acting on the neutron. So the force is 3.2 10 to the negative 18 and times the distance which is 15 centimeters because it's half the distance that they gave you so centimeters and that will be equal to 4.8 10 to the negative 19 joules next question is what is the speed of each particle when it strikes the plate so this is the work done on each particle and we want to find the speed so this is the energy that was put into the particles um, and if we say this is the kinetic energy that was put into the particles we can find their speed so i have the work is equal to the kinetic energy so from here i can do the same for electron and proton so for electron i have one half the mass of the electron velocity of the electron final because initial is zero is equal to so this is the velocity which electron will reach when it uh, reaches the plate that with a positive charge and equals to um, the work which is 4.8 10 to the negative 19. so the mass of the electron is um, 1.6 oh 9 11 10 to the negative 31st so i have the velocity of the electron so this is the velocity of the electron will be equal to i have um, the square root because v is squared and then i have times both sides by two so i have two times 4.8 10 to the negative 19 and divide by the mass of the electron which is 9 11 10 to the negative 30 31st so and that will give me the velocity of the electron equals to um 1 times 10 to the 6 meters per second so you see even though the um the acceleration is higher than the speed of light the number but it doesn't um, last long it doesn't act for long enough for electron to reach that velocity so that is going to be the velocity of the electron and the same i'm going to do for protons so the work is equal to again to kinetic energy so here we had of the electron and here we will have of the proton so then we're going to go to um our next step so the pro for the proton we have one half the mass of the proton velocity of the proton squared is equal to it's the same work which is 4.8 10 to the negative 19 so the velocity of the proton is equal to the square root of um, we have 4.8 10 to the negative 19 times 2 if I times them both by 2 divide by the mass of the proton which is 167 10 to the negative 19 negative 27 the charge is 1.67 10 to the negative 19 um, the mass of the proton is negative 27 and again these numbers are given to you and that will give me the velocity of the proton by the time it reaches the plate the negative plate is going to be equal to um, 24 10 to the third meters per second and for the last question they ask you how long did it take to reach this plate so i'm going to use the distance formula because the distance both of them travel um, is uh, half of the distance between the plates so for the distance formula so for e the distance is equal to average velocity times the time so the time for the electron is equal to the distance is 15 10 to the negative 2 
so that's centimeters divided by the average velocity so it's this velocity um, by divided by 2 because that's the final velocity so that's 0.5 10 to the 6 and the time for the electron is going to be 3 10 to the negative 7 um, seconds or 0.3 microseconds and if they do the same time for the proton i have the distance it travels 10 to the negative second centimeters divided by the average velocity of the proton which is 12 uh, 10 to the third and i'm gonna get the time for the proton is 1.3 10 to the negative fifth seconds And of course, neutron never moved because there was no force acting on it, so there was no velocity and there is no time for it to charge uh, to get to either of the sides of the plates. I haven't seen many questions like this on AP exam for AP Physics 2, but I'm still going to solve it for you because I, um, I'm preparing you for college. So for this problem, we're going to place the forces that are acting on the charge so the force is acting on the charge on both sides i have the force of gravity mg they are the same charges that they repel so electric field force and there is tension so if i do the components for tension i'm gonna have tx and i'm gonna have ty and this is angle theta so that is t cosine 30 degrees and this is t sine 30 degrees and um, let's do it. instead of theta we're just going to plug in 30 because they give you 30 so 30 degrees so from here i see that t cosine 30 is equal to mg for the equilibrium and t sine 30 is equal to electric field force so if you remember like we do in our, our um, AP physics one we're going to divide one by the other to make a tangent but I'm going to divide up not down so it's going to be sine over cosine which gives me a tangent 30 is equal to and I'm dividing force electric over mg electric field force over mg and then the, this is what they say so each uh, sphere is 24 gram and um, the distance is given 70 se 78 centimeters so using that distance I can actually tell what this distance is so the distance right here is uh, 78 sine so this is 78.78 because it's centimeters times sine of 30 which is 0.39 meters or 0.39 centimeters so i have this distance right here and um, the distance across from one point to another is going to be 0 0.78 because it's 60 60 60 triangle that these two spheres with the top create um, so this is 0 0.78 meters and they ask you what the total charge on each sphere is so I'm going to multiply M by mg both sides. So I have mg and tangent theta, or 30 degrees, is equal to electric field force. So electric field force is going to be equal to k. q1, q2, they're the same charge. So that is q squared over the distance between them um, squared. And this distance is this distance between them. So now I'm going to plug in the numbers. I have q is equal to the charge of each sphere is equal to um, distance squared mg tangent 30 degrees and divide by k uh, which is 9 10 to the 9 coulombs constant so from here i have q is equal to i got 0 0.012 10 to the negative 9 i still have to take the square root of this and that will be equal to 3.46 microcoulombs 
and micro stands for 10 to the negative 6. So the charge of each sphere is uh, 3.46 microcoulombs. In this question, they say determine the x coordinate where the electric field is zero using the picture given above. So we have this picture and we are looking where electric field is equal to zero. So I'm going to choose some point. I do not know what that point is, but um, I'm going to say that this distance here is um, some distance d. So that distance is d. And the distance that is left, because the distance between um, these two points is 11, so that is 11 minus d. And I'm going to look in for this point x where the, um, the electric field is equal to 0. So the total electric field must be equal to 0. That means E total, or the sum of all the electric fields at that point, is equal to E1 from the first charge plus E2 from the second charge and must be equal to 0. And your e, um, electric field of the blue source and the red source, are they, these are the source charges, so I have to use the source formula. And the source formula, so electric field, is equal to the force acting on the charge, electric field force, over the charge, and we said this is the test charge. And then we have KQ of the source over the distance squared, or let's call it R squared. In the formula. So this is our distance that we choose. So now if I plug in my formula, I'm going to have 0 is equal to for E1, uh, for the ch first charge, the blue one, maybe I'll do it in blue color. So that is equal to um, K, and I have Q1, which is uh, 1 coulomb, divided by the distance. So so I have my distance uh, squared, and for the second one, for the red one, I have um, k and q2, and divide by the distance squared, which is 11 minus d squared. So this is my 1, this is my q1, and this is my q2. And because it's equal to 0, I can divide all of them by k and cancel k. So I'm going to divide by k, divide by k, divide by k. So what I have left is q1 over d squared is equal to q2 over 11 minus d squared. I don't have to keep my q1 and q2 because I think the numbers are easy 1 and 2. So I'm going to plug them in. So I have 1 over d squared is equal to 2 over um, 11 minus d squared. I'm going to cross multiply them. And if I cross multiply them, I will have 1 times um, 11 minus d squared. That's going to be 121 minus 22d. I'm using the formula. Plus d squared. And that is equal to 2d squared when I cross multiply. So that gives me 121 minus 22d, and um, I'm going to move the other d squared to the other side. That is equal to d squared. I actually get quadratic formula. I have d squared minus or plus 22d and minus 121, and that is equal to 0. So if I use this quadratic equation, um, I'm going to get that my distance is equal to 4.56 uh, meters and um, if I look at the coordinate where that exactly would be so for the coordinate it's um, this distance from 6 I need to move 4.56 so it's 1 2 3 4 and 0.56 so it's the point x is going to be this part so this is how far um, the electric field at the distance electric field is going to be equal to zero. So that gives me the coordinate where x is equal to negative 1.44 meters on the coordinate plane. 
In this question, they say an electron, a proton, and a neutron are each placed in a uniform electric field. An electric field is given 60 newtons per coulomb, directed to the right. What is the magnitude and the direction of the force exerted on the particle? So I have the electric field is equal to force over the charge. And I have electron, proton, and neutron. So the force on the neutron is going to be equal to zero. And the force again on the electron and the force on the proton is going to be the same uh, because they are the same charge. So the force on the proton. I have electric field, which is 60 times the charge, which is 1.6 10 to the negative 19. And I will get 9.6. 10 to the negative 18 newtons and um, the force acting on the electron so this means electric field lines are going from the positive charge plate to the negatively charged plate so that plate on the right is negatively charged this plate is positively charged and electron a force on the electron is going to be acting in this direction and force on the proton is going to be acting in that direction so proton to the right and electron to the left. In this question, they say three points labeled A, B, and C are found in a uniform electric field. At which point will a posit positron, it's positively charged electron, um, so it has the mass of the electron, but it has a positive charge. So at which point will the positron have the greatest electric potential energy? So again, um, the electric field lines going from positive plate. So they go from positive to negative plate. So this one is negative. And because it's a positron, is a positively charged plate. So um, you want for the positron to reach the highest kinetic energy by the time it reaches the plate, the other plate, the one that it wants to go to. And because it is positively charged, so A has the most potential energy because it has this distance um, to accelerate. So at point A, it will have the most potential energy, which will turn the, to the most kinetic energy by the time it reaches the negative plate. In this question, they say a positron is given an initial velocity of 610 to the 6 meters per second uh, to the right. And so they show, so here is uh, positron, so positively charged electron, so it has the mass of the electron, and it travels into a uniform electric field directed to the left. So it's if it's directed to the left, that means the positive plate is on the right side, and um, the negative plate, so I'm going to draw it right here, is on the left side. And as a positron enters electric field, its electric potential is zero. Uh, what will be the electric potential or potential difference at the point where the positron has the speed of 110 to the 6 meters per second? Let's recall some formulas before we start solving this problem. So we have um, the potential difference or the difference potential between two points is equal to the work done on the charge. So I can rewrite as... Um, work done on the charge is equal to q times the change of the potential difference and um, so what i have here is conservation of energy problem but it's um, dressed up and made it look like a really complicated uh, electricity problem so because there is conservation of energy i'm gonna use um, the kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial is equal to the kinetic energy final plus the potential energy final. And, and my potential energy is this part. So this is my potential energy. And my potential energy is given to be zero because electron as it, um, positron when it enters the electric field, it has no uh, electric potential difference on it. So it has zero but it does have initial kinetic energy. So initial kinetic energy of the positron is one half 
the mass of the positron, which is the mass of the electron, and its initial velocity, which is given 6 tenths to the 6 meters per second squared, plus 0, so this part is 0 because the voltage is um, given, electric potential is 0 to start with, and equals to to its new kinetic energy and the new kinetic energy will depend on the new velocity that it reaches so it goes from 6 10 to the 6 to 1 10 to the 6 uh, meters per second it's a positron so it doesn't want to go toward the positive charge so it will slow down because there is acting force on it in the opposite direction so um it's it's still going to have one half the mass of the positron which is the mass of the electron and velocity final squared plus the potential energy final is um, this same formula so that is the charge of the positron which is the charge of the electron and change of the potential um, between where it used to be to where it is now and um, so I can times all of them by two to get rid of twos or one halves. So the mass of the electron is or positron is nine tenths, nine eleven ten to the negative thirty first. Its initial velocity is six ten to the six squared. Um, final velocity and the mass of it afterwards is still 9 um, 11 10 to the negative 31st its new velocity is 1 10 to the 6 squared and plus i times them all by 2 so it's the twice the charge of the positron which is the charge of the electron 1.6 10 to the negative 19 and the change of the potential uh, difference and so I have the potential difference is equal to so the final voltage where the um, positron will end up is equal to 100 volt mm -hmm. and I think that's about it that I'm gonna place in this video um, I answered the question that the student had I um, solved a little bit more than the student asked so if you have any questions in the future, please uh, email me and ask me to solve the questions that you had trouble with. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.